Listeria monocytogenes. According to Burgess classification, these organisms, kingdom, bacteria, phylum firmicutes, class bacilli, order bacillales, family Listeriaceae, genus Listeria, species Listeria monocytogenes. In electron microscopic picture, the Listeria organism looks like this and it is very tiny organism. In gram stain smears, the Listeria organisms are very tiny and they resemble like Streptococci or Cornibacterium diphtheriae. They are very small, gram positive rods, resemble as Streptococci or Cornibacterium diphtheriae. They are catalase positive. They'll have peritricate flagella at room temperature 25 degrees centigrade and they show tumbling motility. Whereas in human body temperatures, they won't produce peritricate flagella and these are beta hemolytic organisms. They, produce, they show beta hemolysis on blood agar culture medium. These organisms are facultative intracellular parasites. They can be seen inside the cells, they can enter into the cells and they can stay out of the cells inside the human human tissues. So we can see granuloma formation because they are intracellular parasitic in nature. We can see granuloma formation inside the human body. And there is a small, short video of Listeria organisms which are present inside the cells. They are moving with the help of actin filaments. And there is a short video of Listeria organism movement tumbling motility in fluid medium. You can see the Listeria organisms here, very tiny organisms, thin tiny organisms and they are moving here without orientation, without orientation. And here we can see a short video of macrophage chasing a listeria. And this is the listeria organism tiny and the macrophage this is the macrophage chasing this listeria. And the listeria was engulfed by macrophage phagocytosis by macrophage. Virulent factors addition. Listeria organisms will have, have D-galactose molecules on their bacterial surface which adhere to D-galactose receptors on the host cells. Invasion Listeria organisms have internal molecules and these internal molecules will stimulate the host cells to get endocytosis. After they get endocytosis with endocy inside the endocytotic vesicle, they secrete Listeria lysine O and this Listeriolysin O acts as hemolysin and they break this endocytotic vesicle membrane and the Listeria organism can come out. And there are phospholipase substance can also be secreted by this Listeria organism which also helps same like Listeria, Listeriolysin O. And these organisms can inhibit oxidative bursts inside the host cells by producing catalase and superoxide disseminase enzymes to neutralize the oxidative bursts. Whenever this organism enters into the cytoplasm, they secrete ACT A molecules and this ACT A molecule stimulates the actin molecules. Actin molecules forms like a tail behind this organism and that actin molecules stimulate this organism, pushes this organism to enter into the next cell. It pushes this organism through this membrane and it will be entering into the next cell. And the host tissues can also be destructed, damaged because of cell mediated immunity. These organisms are facultative intracellular parasites and our human tissues, our human body will react with cell mediated immunity. So we can see granuloma formations and the granulomas can erode the tissues. Epidemiology. These organisms will be transmitted majorly by food, 
There will be a transplacental transmission from mother to fetus. These organisms multiply at refrigeration temperatures. About 2500 cases of listeriosis occurs each year in the United States. The transmission to humans mainly from refrigerated milk, meat and vegetable products. Here is the pathogenesis animation. Here is the listeria organism enters into the cell and activating the actin molecules and this actin molecule pushes the listeria into the next cell and with the help of phospholipase they break the membrane. This is the listeria organism entering into the cell with the help of internalin and by listeriolysin work breaks the membrane by actin A it is activating the actin molecules actin molecule pushes this organism into the next cell and this repetition occurs from one cell to other cell. Here is the short video of pathogenesis of listeria. Specific interactions between surface proteins of listeria and the epithelial host cell occur. This strategy allows listeria to cross tissue barriers and proliferate in protected niches escaping clearance by circulating antibodies, complement, and neutrophils. Cellular receptors are activated by interaction with internalins, such as INLA and INLB. The cell membrane ruffles up and listeria enters the cell by zipper-type phagocytosis. Listeria synthesize listeriolysin O and phospholipases. LLO, a pore-forming toxin, is targeted to the vacuolar membrane and perforates it. PLC aids vacuolar membrane disintegration. The vacuolar membrane has disintegrated, so listeria are released into the cytoplasm and multiply. LLO is targeted for breakdown by several mechanisms that have not been fully elucidated. LLO does not wreak further damage in the host cell. Listeria synthesize ACT A, a protein that forms multiple interactions with cellular proteins, to make a scaffold for actin synthesis. Bacteria replicate freely, but are constrained to one cell. Following the cell division, polymerized actin is associated with only one pole of the bacterial cell. This propels the bacteria in one direction. It is called actin-based motility. Listeria reach the cell membrane using actin-based motility. Propelled by actin polymerization, the bacteria push into the cell membrane, resulting in a protrusion called a listeria pod. Cell-to-cell -cell movement of listeria occurs when a neighboring cell phagocytoses the listeria pod, thereby allowing spread of listeria without exposure to antibodies or other immunoactive molecules. Phagocytosis results in a double membrane phagosome that contains listeria. Once again, listeria needs to escape, so it secretes LLO toxin and PLCs, and the process is repeated. Clinical features. In normal individuals, we can't see any symptoms because they are immune potent. In pregnant women, this listeria infections leads to cause septicemia, placental abscess, and spontaneous abortion. In children, it can lead to cause meningitis and encephalitis. In infants who are born for infected mother, we can see granulomatous infant septicemia where the granulomas are present all over the body in that infants. Children who are born, infants who are born from birth canal to birth canal can get meningitis. In immune compromised patients, there's a high incidence rate of getting meningitis like HIV patients, leukemic patients and transplant patients. Diagnosis. Diagnosis can be done in fluid media by observing tumbling motility these organisms are catalase positive. In cerebrospinal fluid, we can see increased number of PMN cells, low glucose and normal protein levels. We can see granuloma cells inside the CSF as well as inside the bloodstream. And these organisms are beta hemolytic in 1 degree centigrade temperatures. Treatment. This organism can be treated with ampicillin, ciprofloxacin and vancomycin.